housing. Um, and then objectively look at the polls, the amount of support that President Trump has amassed over the last few weeks among uh, significant minority blocs, Latina, Latino and Hispanic and, and black voters and Asian populations. Um, that is quite telling, especially that same support that he may not have necessarily had in 2020 is significantly increased right now in the polls. And so uh, what I can say is that whether or not there's rhetoric, which is on both sides, each side is labeling uh, the other as extremism. Uh, but the bottom line is that the average American wants to be able to afford normal household goods, be able to afford gas, be able to uh, get to work, pay off their student debts and live life more freely uh, without as much government intervention. And the bottom line is that Donald Trump seems to be among a dialectic pathway of two choices. Mm. Uh, the main uh, avenue that can get Americans back to a semblance of living in a uh, better uh, economy in America. And at the end of the day, for the average American voter, it's the economy, stupid. And that's the bottom line. And that's what I think is driving a record number of people to early okay. vote among Republicans to the polls right now. Okay, all right. So, Rick, you, you spoke about economy and then a number of these poll surveys uh, that have come up, uh, it, it has been witnessed when it comes to economy. People are more uh, trusting of Donald Trump uh, to stabilize the country, the inflation rate, the housing crisis, uh, the debt crisis that, that at this point of time, uh, United States of America is is at the brink of facing. Uh, uh, immigration is something that has that seems to have people's vote in favor of Trump. But when, when it comes to the adoption wars, uh, uh, and there has been an effort by Donald Trump to get the support of women voters, I don't know how much of a uh, uh, you know uh, how much of a success rate will he get? Will will he have in in, in wooing the women voters, especially in wake of the pro adoption uh, policy that Kamala Harris at this point of time projects. Well, what I will say is that the reason why Americans are more confident in Donald Trump is because he has a track record. When he was president, we had low inflation. We had interest rates that were manageable and Americans were able to afford more and put more on their table. Under the last four years, we've had Kamala Harris, and she also has a track record of which she so uh, blatantly tries to ignore and has tried to separate herself from Biden. But it's always been the Biden-Harris administration. And for all the things that she's promising America that she's going to do, the question always remains, how come she hasn't done it now? She is in a position of power. She is the vice president. She carries a significant amount of influence. Um, and yet um, Americans continue to struggle. Uh, as it relates, look at the comments right now made by the Secretary of State about World War III. Are we in the brink of World War III? And his response was, well, I wouldn't say we're nearing World War III. They promised this peace in Israel. They promised the end of the war. Um, and in fact, aggression continues to expand. And I'm sure some mm. of my other esteemed colleagues have more views um, about the aggression uh, of China and Russia and what's currently going on. Uh, but it's concerning to folks in America, uh, the conversations of, that North Korea and Russia continue to have and the fact that these wars continue to expand, not, not detract. And how come that hasn't been put to a stop yet? And what is the plan? I think Americans are just tired of hearing what can be done when someone's in a position to do it and it hasn't been done.